Chapter 461, Terrible News After leaving the hospital, Tang Xiao didn't return to the campus but returned to Blue Star Villa Complex. What puzzled him was that Ouyang Lulu and Zhang Xinya hadn't left yet. Instead, they nested lazily on the sofa, crunching snacks, watching idle dramas, chatting and laughing merrily. You girls are lazing about, huh? Tang Xiao asked in a strange tone. Ouyang Lulu jumped up from the sofa and put on the slippers, saying, We were awfully busy, all right? We'd have just gone shopping earlier if wasn't for waiting for you, you know. They very busy. Still, they went shopping? Tang Xiao didn't dare butter up. He could only shake his head and smilingly say, If I remember correctly, Xinya's concert seems to be tomorrow night, right? Zhang Shenya stood up and smiled. As she picked up her bag and took out a stack of tickets from the inside. She handed it to Tang Xiao and said, The genius Mr. Tang, since you don't want to be a special guest at my concert, would you give me face and attend it as an ordinary audience? Anyways, here are some tickets for the concert, you can give it to your classmates and friends. I invite you to come and support us. After hesitating for a short while, Tang Xiao took the concert tickets and smilingly said, Since the big star herself says so, it would be impolite to not go. All right, I'll be there at the appointed time. To have the Honorable Mr. Genius Tang come watch me, I'm sure the concert will be very successful, said Zhang Xinya smilingly. Can you stop joking? Tang Xiao laughed. What's this Mr. Genius Tang? I'm not related with Tang Bohu at all, you know. <laughs> Zhang Xinya used her hand to cover her giggles. Ring, ring, ring. The mobile phone's melodious ringtone rang. Tang Xiao took out his mobile phone and looked at the caller's number. To his surprise, it was an unfamiliar number, seemingly from the Beijing area. His brows immediately raised, as he pressed the answer button and said, Tang Xiao speaking, may I know who am I speaking with? Boss, it's me, Li Xiaojia. A man's voice came out from the mobile phone. After slightly racking his memory, only then did Tang Xiao recall who Li Xiaojia was. He was a talent trained by the Tang family, and once helped him to deal with the Yao family in Guangyang. Is there something you need? Boss, the family has arranged for me to take charge of some intelligence work and I just got transferred to Beijing. Anyhow, I just received an intelligence report that some terrorists are going to create an incident in Shanghai tomorrow. Said Li Xiaojia. You say that terrorists will create an incident here, but why are you calling me? Asked Tang Xiao with a frown. According to the intelligence report, these terrorists' attack should start in the concert of that big star, Zhang Xinya. You are in Shanghai now, and I'm afraid you will go to Zhang Xinya's concert. As of now, the government agencies have already taken charge of the security issues over there. Still, I think I need to tell you this as to prevent any accidents. With a slightly changed complexion, Tang Xiao asked in a deep voice, These terrorists, who are they? They should be some domestic activists and extremists, said Li Xiaojia. We found them in our country after some investigation. They have an extremely radical ideology and detest the way of our society, as well as have formed an underground small organization. That very same organization was also responsible for several incidents that threatened the public and endangered social stability back then. However, the Ministry of State Security was always able to avert the crisis every time. These people are very cunning and crafty, and despite most of them having been arrested by the state, a fraction of the organization is still free. Like always, all kinds of birds can be found when the woods are big enough. The actual truth of this statement was perfectly clear to Tang Xiao. Therefore, people with extremely radical ideas and ideologies, and people who rebelled against society always existed. Only, this group was small in number, the reason why the state had the intention to contain any news about them and why many people outside the inner circles were oblivious to their existence. However, as a friend of Zhang Xinya, he could never allow those radical extremists to make trouble at her concert. After pondering for a while, Tang Xiao then said, 
who's in charge of the operation from the government agencies? The sixth deputy minister from the Ministry of State Security, Lu Chengxi, said Li Xiaojie. He took his people and left for Shanghai last night and joined the other bunch from state security there. He also collaborated with the police force to ensure the public safety and the security issues for Jiang Xinya's concert tomorrow morning. Give me Lu Chongxi's contact number, said Tang Xiao. Boss, are you? Li Xiaojie was surprised. Jiang Xinya is a friend of mine, so I can't allow any accidents to happen in her concert, said Tang Xiao. Anyways, thanks a lot for forwarding this news to me. I'll treat you later when I'm back to Beijing in November. This is what I'm supposed to do, boss. Li Xiaojie's tone was flattering. All right then. Tang Xiao smilingly said, but don't forget to get me his contact number. After saying that, Tang Xiao ended the call with a cloudy expression. At the side, as Zhang Xinya saw Tang Xiao fall into deep thought, she asked, Who called you, Tang Xiao? I heard he saying that an accident is going to happen at my concert tomorrow night? What exactly is going on? The man who just called me is a member of some government agency, said Tang Xiao in a heavy voice. He told me that there will be a number of radical extremists in your concert tomorrow evening. If they were to resort to extreme methods, I'm afraid that bloody and tragic incidents would happen. As of now, the leader from the Ministry of State Security has come to Shanghai, and if my guess is correct, someone will contact you later today. Radical extremists? Who are they, exactly? Asked Zhang Xinya, confused. You know that all kind of birds exist if the forest is big enough. China has a population of more than 1 billion people, so it's a given that some will have extreme ideologies and detest the way of society. These people have also formed a secret small organization, and they were responsible for some bloody incidents in the past that threatened the social stability. And this time, their target is your concert in Shanghai. Once they are successful, at that time, the impact and collateral damage will be enormous. Zhang Xinya's facial expression turned somewhat pale. She simply didn't dare imagine it. If such incident happened just like Tang Xiao said, it would cause enormous damage and severely harm her fans, leading to a tremendous bad impact to her fame and reputation as well. While looking at Tang Xiao, who looked solemn, Zhang Xinya hurriedly pulled his arm and nervously said, Tang Xiao, what should I do? Cancel the concert? Canceling the concert will prove to be very troublesome, I'm afraid, Tang Xiao shook his head. As far as I know, the tickets for your concert are almost all sold out, right? Your fans will surely be furious once it got canceled, and that will bring you a tremendous negative influence. Furthermore, I'm sure your business partners won't agree either. Of course, the most important thing is, some top brasses from the state are hoping that they can apprehend and clean up the extremists while you are carrying out your concert. Zhang Shenya gaped. She didn't know how to respond for a while, yet her eyes gave out a pleading look for help as she gazed at Tang Xiao. The leader in charge of this operation from the state is a man called Lu Changxi. I'll give him a call now to discuss the issue of cooperation. If there really are radical extremists doing terrorist activities at your concert, at that time, the very first thing that shall be done is to capture them immediately, hence stopping their villainous acts. Zhang Xinya hastily nodded, eyes full of gratitude. Immediately after, Tang Xiao dialed the phone number sent by Li Xiaojie, as a deep and heavy voice was heard ten seconds afterward. Li Changxi here, who am I speaking with? Hello, Secretary Liu. I'm Tang Xiao, said Tang Xiao. Tang Xiao? Who is Tang Xiao? Lu Changxi's tone was very cold. My grandfather is Tang Guisheng, and Tang Yunpeng is my uncle, said Tang Xiao. There was no reply from the other side for ten seconds. Then, the man said in a softer tone, I heard about you, Tang Xiao. You are that missing grandson of the Tang family. By the way, is Elder Tang in good health? And about you looking for me? Mr. Liu, grandfather is in good health. 
I'm calling you because I got some news that some people will come to exert their terrorist activities at Zhang Xinya's concert in Shanghai, tomorrow evening. Furthermore, I also learned news that you are the person in charge of this security issue. Can we talk in person? After hesitating for a while, Lu Changxi said, First of all, I need to ask you something, Tang Xiao. The safety issue of Zhang Xinya's concert is the responsibility of the people from our Ministry of State Security as well as the police force. Why are you paying attention to this matter? Zhang Xinya is a friend of mine, and I'm also in Shanghai now, said Tang Xiao seriously. If anything, I also have some ability. I'm at Shangri-La Hotel, room number 808. Take note to be vigilant when you come, we just found a small fish staying there, said Lu Changxi. All right. Tang Xiao replied shortly. Just as he was about to hang up, he suddenly thought of something and spoke again, Mr. Secretary Lu, I wonder. Why is it that you can confirm my identity even though it's my first time calling you? You even told me about this small fish? There was someone from the ministry who called and gave us your number half a minute ago, answered Lu Changxi. I see, replied Tang Xiao, shocked. After ending the call, Tang Xiao looked at Zhang Xinya and said, What are you going to do? I'll stay here with you, answered Zhang Xinya. Tang Xiao nodded, Anyways, Lu Lu, if you have nothing else to do, stay here to accompany Xinya. I'm going to see the man in charge for this operation first, and assign a group of experts from Jingmen Island to come here while convenient. They will be in charge of the security and safety issues at the concert when the time comes. Thank you, said Zhang Xinya with a grateful look. Haven't you heard what I just said? Tang Xiao waved his hand. We are friends, let's dispense the formalities. Besides, I don't want to see criminals threatening the public security to continue to harm people. Hey, how about I send some of my people too? Said Ouyang Lulu. No need. I will assign some of my own people to come here. Tang Xiao waved his hand. By that time, some people will secretly protect Xinya. Even if someone were to slip through the security, it will be impossible for them to harm Xinya. Chapter 462 Nuisance Shangri-La Hotel was located in the bustling Jingning district. The hotel encompassed a large, after all, it was a five-star hotel. The multi-storied hotel building itself was exceptionally elegant and very stylish. Taking the elevator, Tang Xiao arrived at the door of the room number 8068 and immediately knocked it. The door was opened from the inside and a young man, vigilantly looking at Tang Xiao, asked, Who are you? Tang Xiao. The young man nodded and poked his head out, glancing at both sides of the corridor. Then, he stepped back and said, Please come inside, Mr. Tang. After striding into the room, Tang Xiao saw four or five people sitting before the table, one of whom was constantly typing away at a laptop. There was also a mini projector inside, displaying a lot of chaotic pictures. A middle-aged man with rather common features and a black mole on his lips was quietly sitting in front of the mini projector, silently watching the pictures above. Mr. Secretary, Tang Xiao has arrived. The young man who opened the door went to Li Changxi's side and bent over to whisper something to him. Lu Changxi looked back and saw Tang Xiao coming over. A smile immediately appeared on his face as he got up and walked toward Tang Xiao to greet him. He stretched his hand and said, I already heard about your name, Tang Xiao, but I didn't expect that I would be able to see you today. Senior Tang is truly blessed to have such an excellent grandson. You're too polite, Mr. Lu, said Tang Xiao with a chuckle. I also have heard a lot about your heroic deeds. Speaking of that, you are the shield of our country, the protector of our people. After this incident comes to an end, I would like to invite you to dinner to show you my respect. You embarrass me with your commendation, Tang Xiao, said Lu Changxi with a smile. Come here and please sit down. Little Wang, prepare some tea. No need for the tea. Let us talk about the issue with the extremists, said Tang Xiao. 
After they took their seats, Lu Changxi produced a bitter smile and said, Tang Xiao, to tell you the truth, the information about the extremists who have been in hiding for more than a year and are about to take action again was acquired accidentally. We were only able to get the information from one of our people in the intelligence department before we were finally sure that they are targeting Zhang Xinya's upcoming concert in Shanghai. After saying that, he personally operated the projector. As the picture finally fixed on a picture of a bald man, he said, This man is called Shi Biao. He's the owner of a video game's arcade on the surface. Yet, as a matter of fact, he is a member of this radical organization. We have already investigated him, he appeared in several terrorist incidents several years ago. According to the follow-up investigation by our intel, it has been confirmed that he has already arrived in Shanghai. He's now staying in room number 8066, which is the room next door. Tang Xiao released his spiritual sense and instantly saw the middle-aged Shi Biao in the next room. At this moment, the man was currently smoking a cigarette and playing with a dagger in his hand. There was also a girl in her 17s or 18s sitting on the sofa in front of him and typing on a laptop. She was currently playing a game. Is Shi Biao the only clue you have? Is there any specific intelligence on the other members of this terrorist organization? Tang Xiao inquired. Producing a forced smile, Lu Changxi shook his head, we do have some information about them, but it's not detailed enough. For example, there's a guy named Lao Lang, codename Old Wolf. Age about 50, yet we don't have his photo, nor do we know his real name, or any other information on him whatsoever. Nodding, Tang Xiao then said, have you contacted Zhang Xingya yet? No, we haven't contacted her yet. We want to avoid alerting the enemies. Lu Changxi shook his head. But I'm going to contact her at noon tomorrow. I don't think it's necessary to call her, since she was with me when I called you. Also, for her safety, I'll send some people who will be responsible to protect her. Furthermore, I'll also go to the concert venue tomorrow so I can move in cooperation with you. Tang Xiao, I think that it will be best if you don't go, said Lu Changxi quickly. These extremists are not a simple. Take this Shi Biao for example. He used to be in the army, a retired serviceman. He was somehow missing and disappeared for several years afterward. After he appeared, he became the owner of that video game's arcade. Through various clues, we learned that Shi Biao is very powerful and skillful. If you were to fall into an accident at the concert, we won't be able to explain it to Senior Tang. Worry not, sir. I'm a kung fu expert, most people wouldn't be able to hurt me, said Tang Xiao with a smile. Regardless, Lu Changxi still wanted to persuade him against it. Thus, Tang Xiao stopped him by waving his hand and saying, Mr. Secretary Lu, please say no more. Zhang Xingya is a friend of mine, and I cannot ignore her safety. Besides, I won't act rashly and blindly if something happens either. I'll tell you about it firstly, and your people will handle it. Upon hearing it, Lu Changxi immediately felt relieved and smilingly said, I can relax, then. Anyway, I have already met with the leaders of the Public Security Department of Shanghai. This is a joint operation, and the armed police and special police will also move in secret. There will be a large number of undercover officers blending in with the audience. So our people will be able to rush in and stop them should any incident occur. Such being the case, I can rest my worries, said Tang Xiao with a nod. Anyway, if there's nothing else I will take my leave first. Let us keep in touch. All right. Lu Changxi nodded and sent Tang Xiao out of the room by himself. Afterwards, his complexion turned cold. The young man who previously opened the door for Tang Xiao frowned, saying, Mr. Secretary, this Tang Xiao is practically adding a chaotic variable to the situation. Why did you in on the operation? He is a member of the Tang family, after all. Albeit reluctantly, Lu Changxi said with a helpless expression. Moreover, he's also a friend of Zhang Xinya. From the look of his expression, he would act rashly and blindly if I were to refuse to cooperate with him, and that will court us trouble when the time comes. If anything, 
tap his mobile phone number so we can know in advance no matter where he is when the concert is being held. Little Wang, assign two men and quietly protect him once he appears in the concert venue later. Do we still need to protect him, Mr. Secretary? Asked the young man. If by any chance he has an accident while on the mission, do you think the old master of the Tang family will let this matter go? You should have heard the hearsay flying in Beijing, no? For the sake of making up with Tang Xiao, the old master of the Tangs is practically cherishing him in his mouth fearing that he would fall and break from his hand. Because of that, we can't afford to provoke him, we can only assign two men to protect him. It's so depressing. He's practically giving us more problems, a nuisance. The youth commented in a low voice, yet he still nodded. It was already 4.30 p.m. when Tang Xiao left Shangri-La Hotel. After hesitating and pondering for a while, he decided to go to campus to give the concert tickets Zhang Xinya gave him to his friends. On the way to Shanghai University, however, he phoned Gu Xiaoxue and told her to send a group of powerful experts whose background records were relatively clean in the country, to come here. Despite being unsure as to why Tang Xiao needed such a large number of experts, Gu Xiaoxue didn't ask anything and dispatched 40 experts to wait for Tang Xiao's assignment. At Shanghai University, the class was already over by the time Tang Xiao arrived. Instead of going to the classroom, he sat in the car and looked at the students constantly coming out of the entrance. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, Tang Xiao's brows raised, as a wisp of a smile appeared on his face. It was because he saw an acquaintance, Yi Lian Yan. D.D. Tang Xiao sounded the car's horn and suddenly, many students who had come out of the classroom building fixed their eyes on him. Is that? Tang Xiao? Oh god. I'm actually seeing Tang Xiao? He hasn't been coming to campus lately, right? Never thought he would come today. Holy cow. He seems to be very rich. Isn't that a Land Rover Range Rover series? Isn't that car rumored to be priced at at least 1 million? He's now a superstar, buddy. A big celebrity. But, what did he come to the campus for? The classes are already over today. Many people stopped walking and animatedly chattered about him for a while. The sound of the car's horn also attracted Yi Lian Yan and several of her classmates. Ignoring her classmates' gazes and dorm sisters, she half ran toward Tang Xiao. Tang Xiao opened the car's door. While looking at Yi Lian Yan, he smilingly said, you seem very angry? Upon hearing this, Yi Lianyan rushed toward Tang Xiao and kicked his calf. Then, she angrily said, You already knew that I had enrolled here before we registered as fresh mans. Why the hell didn't you tell me? You didn't ask me, Tang Xiao replied with a laugh. Besides, saying that I also got admitted to Shanghai University, pfft. It's not like I can show off so willfully like you, no? You, Yi Lianyan ranted. What a lame argument and perverted logic. You're quibbling. Okay, okay. The fault is mine, all right? Tang Xiao laughed. I didn't tell you because you didn't ask. Well, I'm quite busy now, but I'll treat you two days later. I'll also introduce you to some hot guys. Is that okay? Yi Lianyan rolled her eyes at Tang Xiao. Her action was a bit coquettish and charming. Despite so, she couldn't help smiling, who the hell cares about hot guys? Just give me your cell number again. My phone was lost before, so was your number lost as well. I was originally planning to make a trip to Nine Dragons Island to find Mo An and ask him your number. Smiling, Tang Xiao spelled his number to her. Then, he smilingly said, now you don't need to go there anymore. I just saved you of travel expenses, didn't I? Humph. Yi Lianyan grunted. I will ask for reimbursement from you, anyway. That's right, it was kinda out of my imagination that you would also be a student at Shanghai University. If it wasn't for you performing at the freshman welcoming party, I would still have been in the dark till now. 
speaking about it, you're really amazing, Tang Xiao. You're still a college student, yet you already run so many businesses, and you're even acquainted with so many powerful people. You are. Tang Xiao interrupted her speech and smilingly said, If you want to express your admiration, I think you gotta hold it for now. There's something I gotta do now. What are you going to do? Asked Di Lianyan, confused. I gotta give something to my classmates at the campus, and then I'll go out to deal with something. By the way, do you have some spare time tomorrow night? Do you want to watch the concert of the big star, Zhang Xinya? Chapter 463, Keeping a Mistress in a Golden House I really want to go, said Ilian Yen. Besides, Zhang Xinya is my idol, to begin with, but her concert ticket is way too expensive. I already checked it on the internet, and they had all been sold out, so I can't go even if I want to. Tang Xiao put his hand into his pocket for disguising and took out a stack of concert tickets from his interspatial ring. He then looked up and asked, Do you want some? Yi Lianyan's eyes lit up and said without hesitation, Four. Tang Xiao casually took out four tickets for successive rows and handed them over to her, smilingly said, I just happened to get some tickets by chance. Since you wanna go, just take it. Wow, you're really amazing, Tang Xiao, Yi Lianyan exclaimed and praised. To think you can actually get that many. Say, Lianyan, it was not long since the last time we met, how did you become such a bootlicker? Tang Xiao waved his hand and forced a smile. Who was it that was saying that she would catch up to me and have at least one-tenth of my wealth? It's still vivid in my memory, you know. A blush appeared on Yi Lianyan's charming face as she snappily rebutted, that's in the past, and now is now. Who would have thought that you'd be so perverted, anyway? You are just a student, yet you already have such a huge business and wealth. Thus, my previous goal is annulled, and I gotta make it down to 1%. Pfft. <laughs> Tang Xiao couldn't help bursting into laughter and was thoroughly defeated by her argument. That was a new experience for him, truly. Now that I have your phone number I'll go to the cafeteria for a bite, Tang Xiao. Besides, my dorm sisters are waiting for me. Be sure to call me after you're done with your things, got it? Said Yi Lian Yan with a smile. Sure thing, said Tang Xiao. After letting out a faint smile, Yi Lian Yan turned around and went toward her good sisters. She immediately got surrounded and interrogated by them. Several minutes later, Tang Xiao saw Yu Kai, Hu Ching Song, and the others slouched out of the classroom building and immediately greeted them. Eh, how are you in the campus, eldest bro? Yu Kai was somewhat surprised and couldn't help asking. While looking at their surprised expressions, Tang Xiao smilingly said, I just came to give you guys something. What is it? asked Hu Ching Song. Handing him the remaining tickets, Tang Xiao smilingly said, These are the tickets for Zhang Xinya's concert. The seating positions seem to be good, too. You're responsible to give it to Mu Weining's group of four, while the rest is yours to divide. Concert tickets? They looked shocked, and they all gathered to see it. Shortly after, Hu Ching Song's deep northeastern accent invaded their ears, Tang Big Bro, is so fucking awesome. These are front row tickets. As I recall, isn't its online price at least 2,000 to 3,000 yuan? Tang Xiao laughed and shook his head, go grab a bite. I still need to do something tonight, so I won't be eating on the campus. But I'll come to class starting tomorrow. Eh, eldest bro, leave me your car keys, okay? Yukai hastily called out. After a short hesitation, Tang Xiao gave him his car keys and said, You gotta drive me back first, then. Sure thing. Yukai took the car keys and smilingly walked toward the Land Rover. Shortly after, Yukai drove Tang Xiao to Blue Star Villa Complex. After stopping outside the courtyard, just as Tang Xiao got off from the car, he saw Yukai following him. Eh, aren't you going back? I'm not in a hurry. They will keep it for me, anyway. 
My throat feels a bit dry, so I want to drink something, said Yukai smilingly. Tang Xiao hesitated for a moment. As he recalled that Zhang Xinya and Ouyang Lulu were still inside, he immediately said, just go back to campus and have a drink there. It's not a long drive back. Yukai gave Tang Xiao a dull look and slowly eyed him. A glint flashed in his eyes as he ran toward the villa. In just ten seconds, he had already rushed into the living room. As his eyes swept over the two fairy-like beautiful girls on the sofa, he instantly came to a halt and became slack-jawed. With a wry smile, Tang Xiao looked at Yukai's shocked expression and helplessly said, I told you to go back to campus if you want a drink, didn't I? You just didn't want to listen. Now that pitiable small heart of yours can't bear it, right? All right, whether you want to chase the bell, just work hard on your own, I won't give you a hand at all. Pfft. <laughs> Zhang Xinya and Ouyang Lulu got up from the sofa and looked at the gaping and dumbfounded Yukai. His slack-jawed expression made them laugh. Nevertheless, the fragment of a good poem saying that a smile when she looks back shows all her charms and graces, was thoroughly expressed by their dazzling smiles. Yukai, who was shocked by their beauty, suddenly felt his heart stop pumping blood, and his blood pressure began to drastically hike at this time. Slapping his shoulder, Tang Xiao dragged him from his daze and smilingly said, Okay, please don't make a spectacle of yourself, okay? It's like you've never seen a beauty before. Anyways, I'll introduce her to you. She's Ouyang Lulu, a friend of mine, and I don't think you need me to introduce you Zhang Xinya. That poster on your bedside is her picture, to begin with. Furiously gulping down his saliva, disbelief flashed in his eyes as he stutteringly said, ELD. Eldest bro. A am I not? Am I not dreaming? I thought just that. I I thought that you were keeping a lover or a mistress in your golden house. I I just didn't expect that, T to think that you even have two canaries in your villa? Even, they are even such top-class canaries. Canary? Tang Xiao couldn't help bursting into laughter. Zhang Xinya and Ouyang Lulu exchanged looks, as the two also immediately burst into laughter. All of a sudden, they felt that this friend of Tang Xiao was really too funny and interesting. Ignoring Yu Kai, Tang Xiao said to Ouyang Lulu, Lulu, can you take a bottle of drink from the fridge? Just hurry and give it to him, and then pack him away. It's really shameful to have such a dorm mate, you know. With a lovable expression, Ouyang Lulu complied and ran to the fridge. She handed one bottle to Yukai and uncapped the other before giving it to Tang Xiao, saying, My dear honey, your classmate is thirsty, so you should be thirsty as well. Come, I just helped you open the bottle cap, so drink it quickly. Ah, uh, right. Shinya just said that she gotta change our bed's quilt. She also personally picked a very beautiful quilt from the cabinet and said that it's the one she likes the most. Resting on it at night will certainly fetch us good dreams. Puff, cough, cough, cough. Yukai, who couldn't help showing an envious look upon seeing Ouyang Lulu uncapping the bottle for Tang Xiao, uncapped the bottle himself and gulped down a mouthful. However, before he fully swallowed it, Ouyang Lulu's following words made him choke, nearly sending him to the death early. After coughing, his face, that was almost as pretty as a woman, flushed red. Giving him white eyes, Tang Xiao patted his back and said, Lulu, don't tease him, okay? It's fine if you want to choke him into a mutt or something, but just in case he chokes to the death, that will be a matter of life or death. What the? Get lost. Yukai finally made a comeback. His red face was akin to a hen laying eggs. He angrily glared at Tang Xiao and sternly called out, Tang Big Bro. I just realized today that you're really shameless. Having said that, he ran away. While looking at his departing back, the smile on Tang Xiao's face turned thicker, as he said, This brat is always running his mouth about hot chicks and whatnot every day. All day long he's always despising my proper manners as false and hypocritical. 
Today, this can be considered as me venting my foul mood. Anyways, Lulu, those words you just said, however attractive it sounded, you're a girl, after all. You should say less about this kind of statement later. It wouldn't be good if any bystanders take it in the wrong way. Ouyang Lulu's proud twin peaks were waving turbulently, as she directly gazed at Tang Xiao and said, I'm not afraid. If worst comes to worst, I'll just play the false as really true, and you will take me in, anyway. After hearing that, Tang Xiao spoke no more, and immediately fled up to the second floor. Just as he had just ascended a few steps, he said without turning his back, someone will bring your meals. You two have a bite and then hurry back to your things. Standing at the side, Zhang Xinya was smiling. When Tang Xiao's back disappeared at the staircase, she turned to Ouyang Lulu and said in a low voice, Lulu, do you like Tang Xiao? Of course. Why would I have come here if I didn't like him? But heck, this fella obviously knows what I have in mind, yet he feigns ignorance and plays the fool. He's probably not ready yet, said Zhang Xinya with a giggle. I'm the girl and I'm already ready, but he is like this. Bah, forget it. I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, I firmly believe that there's no stronghold that can't be breached, neither do I believe that there's a golden jade that can't be buckled. Sooner or later my small flame of love will burn his icy cold heart. <laughs> You're so funny, Zhang Xinya giggled. Looking self-satisfied, Ouyang Lulu raised her head and seemingly recalled something. She then patted her forehead and said, My goodness, it's my bad. I just joked around, but forgot a serious matter I wanted to ask him. Let's go after him and ask about what he discussed with those people from the state security. The smile on Zhang Xinya suddenly receded. After hesitating for a short while, she shook her head and said, Let's have dinner first. I think that Tang Xiao would have just told me right away if the situation was really bad. Nodding, Ouyang Lulu replied. Yeah, though Tang Xiao is much younger than us, he's very mature and stable. He's always able to measure the weight of matters. He'd definitely tell us directly and come up with countermeasures. I think so, too, said Zhang Xinya. Anyway, are you going to stay with me after eating? I need to do a rehearsal, so you'll act as my companion. Ouyang Lulu hesitated for a short while before saying, just tell me the address. I need to go back to arrange something. I'll look for you later. That's right. I always meant to ask you the reason you came to Shanghai, BTU you always mystified it. What exactly are you doing here? Asked Zhang Xinya. It's still a secret. Ouyang Lulu laughed coquettishly and leaped toward the sofa. Furthermore, she was still holding up a small secret inside. A secret that she must get Zhang Xinya to be at the scene on the day she opened the business. Chapter 464 Overall Arrangement At the outskirts of Shanghai, inside a large chemical plant. A thin middle-aged man wearing glasses, looking gentle and well-mannered, was sitting in a large warehouse while assembling time bombs. In his eyes, however, loomed a cruel light. A faint excitement could be seen on his face, like he was imagining what the bloody scene would look like. In front of him was a middle-aged woman in a plain dress. She ordinary, and there was an obvious burn injury on her neck. She was currently spinning a butterfly knife. The woman was named Huang Lan, one of the most wanted criminals in the country, who had once committed an arson and burned a family of eight. She also had allegedly murdered four others in cold blood with a knife. It could be said that this woman's hands were full of blood and had committed numerous crimes. At the same time, she was also a drug dealer as well as an addict. Creak. A sound of car's brake squeaked outside the warehouse. While gripping her butterfly knife backhandedly, Wang Lan bolted toward the door. Through a crack in the door, she saw four men get off from an SUV. Her look of vigilance immediately vanished, replaced by a somewhat cruel smile. She opened the door and looked at the four men, who were carrying bags, and said, You're late. 
An old man whose hairs were fully gray, was wearing canvas shoes and had a bag on his back, snorted and said, We bumped into a checkpoint on the way here. We took a long detour to get here, you know. Huang Lan, have you prepared what I asked? They're all set and ready. AIDS infected blood, a total of 2,000 milliliters, I'll have the pushpin smeared by it. I'll sneak into the concert venue tomorrow in the early morning and place them on the seats. If the pushpins pierce through skin, the HIV will immediately enter their body. The old man nodded with satisfaction and then asked again, what about old wolf? How is it going with his time bombs? We already spent quite a huge effort this time to get a large batch of explosives. Our operation will be mostly have gone south if something wrong happens. He's still at it, but he has already made a lot of it, said Huang Lan with a nod. I'm sure that once the concert stars and we use the remote control to have it detonated, the concert venue will be blown up. The number of people dying at that time will be countless. Great. The old man said. Anyhow, once we have finished this business transaction, go abroad immediately. We'll come back again a few years later after this matter has cooled down. Ah. Uh. Shu has prepared 5 million yuan for each of you, so all of you need not worry about your livelihood in the years to come. It doesn't matter. For me, as long as I can kill more people I'll be satisfied, enough for venting my hatred. Hmph, <laughs> before I came to Shanghai I killed all the remaining few people who bullied our family in the past. I won't have any lingering regrets if I were to die in this operation. The old man creased his brows. A sinister air exuded all over his body as he said, We all have made contributions to this country, yet we have been forsaken by its people. Hence, kill as many as you can. I'm not afraid of telling you that I have secretly installed a number of time bombs given to me by Old Wolf at Shanghai government site. Half an hour after the concert is blown up, the Shanghai government site will also become ruins. This will be my gift for them. Nicely done. Huang Lan gave him a thumbs up. Anyway, have you told Shi Biao about our hiding place? The old man suddenly asked. Old Wolf, who was working on a time bomb, raised his head, a sinister and ruthless glint flashing in his eyes. He then coldly snorted, Tell him? That fucking bastard's identity is way too mysterious. We have to fucking guard against him despite him being one of our organization's members. The old man said, what you said is true enough. Though he has joined us very early, he went missing for a few years, and by the time he came back from abroad, his ability has grown and he even has tons of money. The operation at Zhang Xinya's concert this time is the biggest one in history. So it's best not to tell him about this. Anyway, there's six of us here. There's still nine who haven't arrived yet. Are we gonna wait for them? Or shall we? Let us wait for them. There are some important nodes in our planning operation that need them to deal with. Otherwise, it wouldn't be easy for us to successfully accomplish this action, said the old man. Got it. Two hours later, when the darkness of the night shrouded the earth and moonlight rose from the horizon to the sky, several cars quickly stopped outside the warehouse. Nine men and women got off carrying various things into the warehouse, as the group quickly gathered together. Ah. Uh. Ming, you are a security guard at Zhang Xinya's concert. We're relying on you to smoothly sneak inside, said the old man. The young man named. Ah. Uh. Ming nodded and coldly said, relax. I'll have it well arranged. Furthermore, I'll install the time bomb under the stage myself. Once it explodes Zhang Xinya will surely get blown up and die a tragic death. Just thinking about how such a goddess-like superstar will die by my hands kinda makes me excited. The old man nodded. Swept his gaze over all of them, he then said in a deep and heavy voice, This operation will definitely create a huge commotion throughout the country, even stirring the whole world. Hence, all of you had better buckle up. Even if we have to die in this operation, as long as our plans are successful, it's all worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. Sure thing. 
The other fourteen people nodded heavily, a look of being unafraid of death on their faces. As abnormal and perverted as they were inside, they were mentally ill and distorted. The world was the object of their hatred along with all walks of life within it. Hence, they had long since taken their own life and death without many precautions. The fear of facing death was still there inside them, yet they were willing if they could decimate more people, even at the cost of their lives. Shanghai Public Security Department Inside the criminal cases meeting room, the head of the criminal police squad, Zhao Ronghua, was clamping a cigarette in his fingers. A look of solemnness was cast on his face. More than ten core members of the criminal police squad were also inside the meeting room, currently accepting their assignments. At the same time, the leader of the armed police, the head of the intelligence service, and Lu Changxi of the Ministry of State Security from Beijing were also present at the meeting. Each of them had solemn and dignified, as well as worried and restless expressions on their faces. Nowadays, the most important thing to have was information and intelligence. However, they didn't have much information on the other members of this dangerous organization other Sher Biao and the girl. I suggest that we immediately send out the police force to completely seal the concert venue that is going to be used for Zhang Xinyao's concert. Relieve the security guards responsible for the concert from their tasks and lay out a comprehensive security check ahead of time for the entire venue. Once suspicious people are found, we must immediately take control and carry out a full investigation should any suspicious problem arises, after sighing, Zhao Ronghua spoke seriously. No, our mission this time is to make sure that Zhang Xinya's concert is carried on smoothly, Lu Changxi shook his head and rebutted. On the other hand, we must also find those criminals, or else we may be able to avert and avoid the crisis this time, but what about the next time? What are we going to do should they lay out their terrorist activities next time? But, Mr. Secretary Liu, the situation has come to a very dangerous point. We have virtually no information pertaining the enemies, while there will also be tens of thousands of fans at the concert scene. Will we even able to find those dangerous elements among them? It must be known, even the slightest carelessness may endanger the lives of thousands of people. Retorted Zhao Ronghua. Before those criminals act they will definitely find a way to enter the concert scene. If they use mass destruction weapons, they must surely move ahead of time. If so, before the fans enter the concert venue we can eliminate their elite forces and conduct all-around investigations, and immediately do a clean-up once we find any suspicious persons there. Additionally, we have sent some people mixed in with the security guards carrying out a thorough investigation. As long as they possess discerning eyes and have decent skills, we can get the criminals from the crowd. They can either eliminate or capture them once they've found those lunatics. Mr. Secretary Liu, even if our arrangement is very detailed, the risks will still be there, no? Once there's a failure on our side, major security incidents will follow. And we will be very miserable by that time. Regardless, I must still find those terrorists. Lu Changxi coldly rebutted. How many people have lost their lives in those fucking lunatics' hands because of the major cases a few years ago? No. I can no longer afford to let them go scot-free, neither can I endure it to be tormented yet again, only because I gave them more time to endanger the citizens. This. Zhao Ronghua hesitated for a short while, before he eventually slammed his hands on the table. He then said in a very heavy voice, such being the case, I'll go crazy and follow Secretary Liu this once. On the police side, I'll personally lead my team. The next morning. At the Shanghai train station, a man and a woman who looked alert, vigorous, and energetic were carrying travel bags as they walked out of the station. Shortly after, a person greeted and led them to a car outside and then left. At Blue Star Villa Complex. Tang Xiao was quietly standing on the stairs to the villa's door, looking at the forty experts of the everlasting feast hall below. Thirty men and ten women. I welcome your arrival in Shanghai. The fact that Gu Xiaoxue sent you all indicates that you are all outstanding talents. This time I need help from all of you, said Tang Xiao solemnly in his eyes. 
Among the 40 of you, who is the team leader? It's me, boss. Xing Li. A sturdy man stood out from the crowd and said with a reverential expression. Nodding at him, Tang Xiao then said, The mission that will be assigned to you this time is to ensure the safety of the big star, Zhang Xinya's concert tomorrow evening. According to the information I've received, a group of extremists is attempting to carry on their terrorist acts at her concert. Many people will lose their lives if they're successful. Hence, you will make sure that the concert goes smoothly and do whatever means necessary to find out, contain, or kill those lunatics. Are there any specific information on these extremists, boss? Asked Xing Li. No, thus I can only rely on you to find it, Tang Xiao shook his head. I'm perfectly aware what you guys have experienced abroad, so I think that you will understand this kind of adversary. Chapter 465, Precise Pinpointing With Tang Xiao's arrangement, the 40 experts from the Everlasting Feast Hall left Blue Star Villa Complex and rushed toward Shanghai New World Center. They were all experts in assassination as well as possessed great knowledge in crime, hence they understood how the criminals work by heart. Thus, it made Tang Xiao rather relieved of having them tracking the terrorists. Additionally, another reason why he felt more assured was also that he had a particular method for radar monitoring, his spiritual sense. With this tool, he could just walk in circles around Zhang Xinya's concert venue and could find the danger lurking in the dark. Be it weapons or the suspects, they wouldn't be able to escape from his spiritual sense even if they didn't reveal any clues. The next morning Tang Xiao came to the campus to attend class. One thing that made him happy was that the class teacher in charge, Han Qingwu, didn't come to the campus. It was said that she wouldn't return to campus until October 1st. In the afternoon, Tang Xiao took an economics. Thus, his class ended at 4 p.m. Inside the classroom. As the professor left the class, Yu Kai patted Tang Xiao's shoulder and asked, Eldest bro, Tang, let's go to the New World Center together. It's about time we get there, so we can still find a place to grab a bite after the concert. Sorry, buddy. I still have other things to deal with. I'll catch up with you later, Tang Xiao shook his head. Just go ahead. I'll treat you tonight. Winking at Tang Xiao, Yu Kai chuckled, Are you going with that pretty Lulu? Man, your mind is really crooked, you know. Is there anything else other than hot chicks inside it? Said Tang Xiao. Giving him the middle finger, Yu Kai retorted, Damn, I know how shameless you are now, Tang eldest bro. Just enjoy your luck, and I'll be a hermit for now. Anyhow, we'll see you again at the concert. Wait, give me your car keys, Tang Xiao stopped him and said while stretching out his hand. Yu Kai stared blankly, as he said between laughter and tears, Please excuse me, buddy. You have so many luxury cars in your garage, why do you want my car keys? Don't you think that riding those cars is a bit too much? If I were to drive them and be seen by people with particular intentions, I don't know whatever shitty news may appear tomorrow. Be quick and don't make that shitty face, will ya? Taking out his car keys, Yukai helplessly said, Tang eldest bro, only now am I finally convinced by you. I've always wanted to be famous, yet it's hopeless. But you, you've become famous, yet you're hiding from fame, desperately staying low profile. You know what? You are virtually living in plenty without appreciating it. Tang Xiao didn't feel like arguing with him. After taking the car keys from Yu Kai, the duo then left the classroom building. Tang Xiao asked where his car was parked. After arriving there, he started the BMB and quickly left. The concert would start at 7 p.m., and the fans would start entering the stadium at 6 p.m. Hence, he needed to get there before the fans started entering the venue. Shanghai New World Center Located in the second most prosperous area of Shanghai, it was only slightly worse than the beach area. The New World Center encompassed a large area, large enough to accommodate more than 50,000 people. It was also the best place to hold large events in Shanghai. Driving there, Tang Xiao arrived at the block and looked for a large shopping mall. 
After parking the car in the underground parking lot, he rushed toward New World Center on foot. The number of fans from all corners of the country was really too many, they were virtually everywhere. On the way there, he bought a duckbill cap with Zhang Xinya's image on it. It was because many people knew his identity, so he had to spend some effort from attracting attention. At the east entrance While looking at the fans who had already lined up and made a long queue, Tang Xiao saw dozens of security guards maintaining order at the entrance. He immediately phoned Lu Chongxi and walked past several long lines of fans. Hey, what are you doing? Get back to the queue. A security guard approached and he shouted at Tang Xiao as he saw him cutting the line. In a flash, the fans who were in the front line looked at Tang Xiao with bad expressions. Many of them looked contemptuous, as if they were silently condemning Tang Xiao's behavior of not wanting to line up in the queue. I'm waiting for someone. Said Tang Xiao. The security guard creased his brows and asked in a deep voice, Who's the person you are waiting for? The person I'm waiting for should be coming out soon. I'll immediately leave if he doesn't show up within three minutes, said Tang Xiao. Despite hesitating, the security guard stopped talking. Nevertheless, he kept vigilant eyes on Tang Xiao. After a minute, a middle-aged woman dressed in a suit and with a work card hanging on her chest came out of the east entrance. She walked toward Tang Xiao and respectfully said, Mr. Tang, Chief Lu wants me to take you to him. All right. Tang Xiao nodded. The security guard looked at Tang Xiao and the woman. He eventually turned around and moved to the side. The fans who originally shot Tang Xiao contemptuous looks immediately looked envious. After entering, Tang Xiao followed the woman and arrived at the venue hall. After looking around he found that there were many security guards patrolling everywhere. Lots of men and women wearing work cards were scattered throughout the venue, motionlessly standing while watching the surroundings. Where is Lu Changchi? Asked Tang Xiao. Chief Lu is in the backstage, arranging and instructing for the operation. I'll take you over there replied the woman. No need, just get me a work card like yours. I'll walk around and contact him again when necessary. The woman hesitated for a moment before taking out her mobile phone to take Tang Xiao's picture. Following that, she nodded and said, please wait here, I'll be back shortly. After four or five minutes passed, the woman came back with a work card. Handing it over, she said, Mr. Tang, if you have nothing else, I'll be back to my duties. Copy that. After the woman left, Tang Xiao looked at the surrounding. At the same time, he also released his spiritual sense and covered a radius of a 200 to 300 meters area with his perception. Huh? Just two or three seconds later he creased his brows because he found a box made of plastic in a place about 120 meters away from the left front, within the scope of his spiritual sense. The plastic box was small, about as big as a cigarette pack. It was glued to the bottom of a seat and was placed there with adhesive tape. However, there was a watch pointer ticking within the plastic box. A bomb? Although he had never seen what a real bomb looked like in reality, he had seen it many times in movies. He didn't inform Lu Changxi immediately and instead, pretended to look casually while walking toward that side. Furthermore, several people around frowned and looked displeased as he sat directly at the edge of the row of that chair. He looked around. It seems it was spread out like a maze to kill more people. Half a minute later, when no one around was paying attention to him anymore, he pretended to fix the tie on his shoe, bent down and had a glimpse of the bomb's position. He then stood and strolled around the surroundings. Half a minute later, while maintaining his spiritual sense active, he found a similar bomb and then moved again after memorizing its position. Time fleeted by. After more than ten minutes Tang Xiao circled around to the back row. He enveloped the area with his spiritual sense and found another six bombs. Shortly after, his pace began to speed up, walking while observing the surroundings with his spiritual sense. After spending more than twenty minutes, he had already scoured the entire venue with his perception. 
he finally learned the exact number of bombs. 14. Thus, while walking toward the backstage, he dialed Lu Chongxi's phone number. Hello? Tang Shou? From the mobile phone, Lu Chongxi's voice came out. Secretary Lu, please listen carefully to every word I say. You must remember each word and number I'm about to tell you. There is a suspicious thing under the seat number 1135 in zone A1, and also one in zone A2 seat number 3673, zone B1 seat number 1247, zone B2 seat number 6940, zone C. Tang Xiao finished reporting all 16 spots within a breath as he arrived at the stage. Just as he was about to tell Lu Changxi that he had already finished with the report, his complexion suddenly changed and then said again, there is also a suspicious thing in the middle of the stage. Please make sure to send some people to investigate everything I told you. Lu Changxi was silent for a few seconds before saying, I'll send some people to check it now. All right. Tang Xiao hung up the phone and walked into the backstage hallway from the side door. He purposely walked unhurriedly while releasing his spiritual sense to check each place, each area, and even the remotest place. At this time, Lu Chengxi was leading the core members of the two security agencies and entering the venue from the side door in the other direction. Next to him was the young man who had opened the door to Tang Xiao before. He looked discontented when he spoke, Chief, I don't think we should give a damn about Tang Xiao's report, he's just messing around. Now is a very unusual time, we had better keep an eye on the situation in the surroundings so we can immediately deal with any suspects or suspicious issues. Should they arise? I knew that he'd give us trouble. However, in our line of work we must never ignore a lead. Let's just take a look at the places he mentioned. I'll have a good chat with him if there's nothing there. The young man nodded, albeit reluctantly, and said, All right. Then I'll have a look at seat number 0466 in zone A1. Lu Changxi nodded as his vision shifted to the B zone. A minute later, when the young man came to the seat number 0466 in zone A1, as he squatted on the floor and had a look at the seat, he found nothing on the floor. However, him being a professional and possessing good investigation methods, he subconsciously touched the bottom of the chair. The moment after, however, his body turned slightly stiff as his hand touched something. He immediately knelt on the floor with his face down to see what he had just touched tape and a box? How come this kind of thing was placed under the chair? Furthermore, how did it seem that it was intentionally placed there?